I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you know me, you will know my Father. Rejected by mortals yet exalted by God, Jesus, chosen and precious, like a treasured stone, became the chief cornerstone of God's living temple. We who believe are living stones. An artist friend of mine collects stones. Whatever stone speaks to her, it might be the color or the shape or the texture or a marking on it. And she picks them up and she carries them to her studio where she has created a beautiful river of stone that flows throughout it. Visually and energetically, these stones evoke a sense of peace, a sense of unity, bringing the space together. She believes stones have vibration, as the earth itself has vibration and sings its own song. She is a believer in Jesus the Christ, a mystic who embraces that we are living stones. When we gather together, we become the living temple of God. For her and for all Christians, it begins with Jesus as the chief cornerstone. It is he who draws us into unity, holds us together. He is the way. In our gospel today, Jesus and the disciples are at their last meal together. His time with them is short. In his final discourse, Jesus is comforting and teaching them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe. He is going to prepare a special place for each of them in his Father's house. In this world, there are many people who struggle to belong who seek a place where they are welcomed. In this moment, Jesus is telling the disciples, there is room for each one in his Father's house. Jesus also says, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas asked the questions, no, the question no one else is willing to ask. We don't know where you are going. How can we possibly know the way? The response is, I am the way. In their hearts, they know. Belief in him as the incarnate son of God and committing one's whole life and self to follow Jesus is the way. It is relational beginning in our relationship with Jesus and Jesus' relationship with God. Jesus is the one who leads to the Father, teaches us how to live in his way, and doing so is best through imitating him, the life he lived, the lessons he taught, the message he shared, are the means of living into the way. Jesus shows us the truth of the Father in his living, and that truth is love. And we must be careful as 21st century believers, remembering that in John's Gospel, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, it is a declaration of what the Johannine community believed, and it's an acclamation of their identity as a community outside of Judaism. As with any family system, attempting to define oneself is often a rocky road and can be contentious, met with resistance. And in this century, we are wise to remember we are not fighting their battle. We're not having to make the same declarations. We are striving to walk a faithful path as believers in Jesus. Through walking the walk and living the truth, that is love incarnate. Others will be drawn to Jesus. It is a path, a journey that involves risk, encountering the unknown, and rising to a multitude of experiences. Ultimately, it leads us each to a moment of encountering our own cross, 
where the forces of heaven and earth meet. We have to stand in our faith to have the courage to do and be our true self in the moment. St. Stephen was filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, full of grace and fortitude. Known as a powerful orator, today we encounter him as the first martyr. Considered a deacon, one of the seven chosen to relieve the apostles of the burden of serving tables and caring for the widows. It was the power of his preaching and the great wonders and signs that the Holy Spirit worked through him that caused the people to stone him to death. In his time of personal trial, he sees the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right, God's right hand. His belief is so strong as he is being stoned, he says, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But the crowd had hardened their hearts. They covered their ears. They do not want to know. They rushed Stephen and dragged him outside the city to stone him. In preparation, those who were going to stone him laid their coats at the foot of the young man named Saul. And yes, this is the same Saul who grows up to become a zealot who persecutes Christians. Encounters the Lord on the road to Damascus, is struck blind, converted, and renamed Paul. As Stephen was being stoned, he prayed familiar words in imitation of Christ on the cross. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And Lord, do not hold this sin against them. He gives his spirit up and forgives the act of the people who murdered him. And they say there was an angelic expression on his face as he was being stoned. The Holy Spirit, his faith, and God's grace held him fast. Stephen is the patron saint of stonemasons, and Christ is the cornerstone rejected by mortals, yet chosen by God. And you are chosen, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may, like Stephen, proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are living stones. In uniting, the vibration of love sings out as each soul finds nurture and sustenance. In the silence of God's presence, in the sharing of gifts, in learning together and becoming, we touch the holy, walk in the way, and become God's living temple today. Whenever two or three are gathered together. So, with the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in Jesus. Speak the gospel at all times, use words if necessary, that others may be drawn to a life in Christ. Amen.